Morning, Dr. Brad. Morning, Kurt. My coffee cup looks really dirty on screen. I'm, uh, mine is not going to be revealed how dirty it is. It's <laughs> pretty rough. So I but, guess we're going to do a short, couple of shorts this morning. I so, would like to. Not so yeah. short shorts. Our reputation. Yeah, we'll see how short they are. It's kind yeah. of an interesting function. And it, it, this is what's interesting at this is, is see how I've been bent. My uh, perspective has been bent now because of your uh, your thesis on consciousness and memory relations. And I'm like, that makes total sense. But it's like it's it's uh, kind of warping my perspective a little bit. And I'm okay with that. Because okay. it's like, no, it's no, like gonna, this is when I, I, I got to play with you on that one. Wait, I got to say this is. Kurt was right again. <laughs> Kurt's right as usual. And it's okay. But the the, the first short I wanted to make was about boomers. And, and it, th this relates to why Kurt was right again, because Kurt was right about the uh, incentives. It's about incentives. Now, there, there may be conspiracies organizing those incentives, but the, the incentives are what actually have operational value. And so I, in the concept of the boomers, they have been highly bribed yes, and, and coerced by financial mechanisms to they were overpaid and now they're over invested in the failing system. Yes. And they have an incentive to resist change mm -hmm. because it's, they're comfortable mm -hmm. and that this is going to cause problems because it's like the kids are not being satisfied. Mm. They have any sense? No, they're more than they're dissatisfied. They're angry. Well, they 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 have good reason to be so because they they are getting the short end of the shaft. Yes, they are. It's pretty serious. So that's the that's the basic thought I had, and I'm happy you had any um, thoughts on that. That might be a super short short. Well, I I think uh, what I like about what you said is that there's a tendency to blame the boomers, but the boomers were the product of the post-war yes. boom. And so the post-war boom was a period where if we put it in context, we had the boom of the 1800s, right? Then the Civil War. And the, then we had the boom around 1900, at which point the United States surpassed England in wealth and productivity. And so that created another American boom and it created a sort of the same kind of a, uh, a brilliant uh, belief in the world, right? Impossibility, which led to the Great Depression. And then at the, the, the war, whether there's always this argument of how much the war helped us. Yes getting out of uh, the depression, but we had our brush with socialism there with with, with uh, Roosevelt, FDR. And then we had, uh, but in the 50s, after the war, we're the only economy left standing. So if you talk to people who were in that age, and I, I do regularly, who were in that period, which is my mother's, my mother's period of maturity, is she said, well, you know, you could quit a job today and find another one tomorrow. That's right. And jobs paid good. Right, I'm, yes. I'm using I'm using the improper English on purpose, right? Jo jobs paid well, right? Yes. But jobs paid good, right? And uh, you could have, because of that, right? But by the '70s, that was gone, and the yes. '70s we had the um, combination of the uh, the the after effects of the '60s uh, immigration and legislation liberalization problem, right? We had the abortion um, and the pill, and, and the end of the v end of the Vietnam War, and Watergate, and the oil crisis, all in sequence, which was really about the world reequilibrating our previously short-term privileged position for a few decades out, and then we had stagflation. Right? Yep. And the way we got so so we had so so it, it really sucked. I mean, I, when people talk about the '60s and '70s, I'm like, what are you crazy? I mean, what they're doing is they're they're thinking about how it, how the the post the 1960s movement 
that that took away responsibility from the working and lower classes to be, act like the middle class and celebrating that divergence in music and drugs and sex and all this other stuff. But of course, I saw it as collapse. And I was a kid. Um, and so uh, then what we happened is around the time you had Star Wars in 77, right? Um, and from there we had a, there was a sort of gestalt uh, happened around Star Wars, which I that's the that's the part where I noticed it changed because it was the reintroduction of heroism. And then you had the Reagan period, which was you know had Granada and whatever, which brought about heroism. And Reagan's use of the credit capacity of the United States to to encourage home ownership, which sort of lasted through, the 90s, right? And then we had the fall of the Soviet Union and we squandered, now at the fall of the Soviet Union happened at the same time Chinese production came online, which uh, which was lowered the cost of goods in exchange, and at the same time we had lowered the cost of, uh, we had lowered, the, we had rapidly accelerated the cost of credit and the dilution of the dollar and inflation so that we could, do all that consumption and we ran out of that by 2008 and it's now we're stuck in it right so then we had uh 2001 which shocked us right uh, again and then we had the wars over the 2000s which were our recognition that we could no longer try to hold up the world pattern of uh finance uh, we could no longer hold up the pa pattern of preventing empires by the uh, fostering of, uh, of uh, non-aggression between states, basically um, containment of, secondly, of, uh, of, ec of uh, human rights. So focusing states, states that would, uh, under agrarianism, aggressively expand externally to instead, under industrialism, expand internally, right, without creating wars. And um, third, that by doing this, we could create the world pattern of finance and trade that would encourage everybody to be, to cooperate. Um, the problem is not everyone could do it. And so, and in and, and all places. And secondly, there were still enough imperial orders Basically, the imperial orders surround from Russia uh, to Iran uh, to China. They surround what's left of the wild lands, basically Islam. Um, and so they feel the need for uh, authoritarianism. Um, and particularly China feels the need, the, Russia feels the need for authoritarianism to preserve its empire. And China need, feels the need for authoritarianism to restore its empire. Well, you could argue they're both doing that because they feel um, insecure, but also as a matter of pride. So, uh, so we, so what happened is by the by the end of the two, uh, 2010s, right, we had got to the position where we understood, uh, whether explicitly or implicitly, that whiteness is only expandable. To other cultures uh, equally as advanced, meaning uh, a few East, part, parts of East Asia and uh, Europeans. In other words, people who've had majority middle classes for a while and have a high enough IQ to support it. So China's problem is that China needs to break down into 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 nation states, and the the Chinese Communist Party doesn't want that because it means the Han majority in that, that area or Han ethnicity will uh, fragment and that they will return to their warring states period when our view is no, they will just uh, return to uh, the, the, where they will go through the natural process of evolving into nation states, each of which uh, alters itself. What China is thinking is there's still this very small wealthy portion of the country and this very vast population in China that still has no high school education um, and works in subsistence farming. And so that's their, their reason for preserving authoritarianism. 
unfortunately, they feel they want to expand, right, as a, a pridefully instead of maintain this in, interior. I just find this conversation to have gone off I'm, the rail. I, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to finish my arc. You can come back and do your thing afterwards. Um, so 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 when we look at under this arc, you were saying people are the boomers failed. I'm like, well. I didn't say they failed. Well, no, sorry. The hold on. The, the boomers were given uh, incentives. It's not even the boomers who gave them incentives. It's the great generation that gave them the incentives. The two generations before that gave them incentives in order to make them behave such that they would essentially pay to drag right. That they could use all these resources, their position, the debt, the population, their numbers, to to defend to establish the dominance of the Western, what we call liberal, classical liberal order, such that we would continue to suppress empires because those two generations, the greatest generation and the one before it, the silent generation, I can't remember what their names are, yeah. they, they understood that the world was made of war because of empires. So what's happened is the boomers uh, turned, the world was made of empires into communism and authoritarianism instead of the world was made of empires. And then um, the then the when, when we were successful enough at that and ran out and our people understood the cost they had borne and those costs have accumulated in today, they're like, we can't pay those costs anymore. We need to be all about us, which is make America great again and focus nationally instead of internationally. So we're sort of there now. So I, I was trying to simply make the state statement that generations follow the incentives that they are partly given by the generations before in the context of whatever grand strategy that the nation sort of has to follow. And right now we have to follow a grand strategy of withdrawal without mm -hmm. letting the without letting a catastrophe happen. That will that will allow those empires to expand, and will have a deleterious effect on the people who have, basically even the South Americans, basically anybody who's dependent upon world world trade, free world trade, and who wants to pursue their independence. So you get the failure of the Western attempt on both sides. You get people like Martin and in the Czech Republic, and they want to rebel against uh, what they see is this correctly see as the spread of decadence on top of this liberal order, right? Which is really the feminine Jewish thing on top of this liberal order. Um, in other words, it's the cultural warfare that's being put on top of the strategic warfare. And he's right, right? Um, the Hungarians are right, right? That this, that it's one thing to spread the initial strategy of focus on these things to stop n global war and to stop nations from... I, think I regard these as lies, okay? I, I regard them as a, a, a form of subterfuge in which you're taught that... You are told that that is what is occurring when, in fact, it's warfare against you and everyone else that's being waged by the elite who are not telling you what their intentions are but are telling you something that will cause you to behave in a manner that they prefer. Well, I, I think, okay, so let's go. Let's so, go. so I would go like this. It's like the, the, the great generation was duped into world war two. The silent generation was sold this liberalism and it's all lies. And then the boomers were given opportunities and then bribed like hell and then inflation, et cetera, because the financial powers that be are using it to control the population right. in their so, psychological sense. Okay, so let, let, me, let me take it back a step before, because as I've said before, you're absolutely right. So the, the however, you know, how you see the world depends on the time span of influences you're including, which is why I say, you have to, if you don't establish the limits of causality, then you don't understand, then you will misinterpret the causality within. It's very hard to disagree with the uh, the Anglo 
uh, imperial uh, more expansion of morality and the moral position that the Anglos held prior to the seizure and takeover of the aristocracy and by the financialists. Yeah, so 1885 in England. Correct. And so that's, that's we're in agreement, 100%. So, 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 okay. So that's, so when I say that, that's the point I'm trying to make that arc is I'm saying you're absolutely right. But what I'm saying is that there's a strategic issue on a geostrategic military issue that's been, that's been consistent. There is, however, this bullshit financial elite, this bullshit uh, or, or, or a clerical or a clerical elite, let's call them clerical because secular clerical elite. And they ride on top of this strategy to spread their fucking self-interest and sedition. Right. And so the reason I like to do this is I want to show people the whole picture because then they want to because otherwise they react to the part of the pyramid they see. Yes. Instead of the base of the pyramid was where this all started. And so what I try to do is I'm like, we got to kill those people up above, not literally, but metaphorically, um, their capacity to do evil because it was that liberal that classical liberalism and that moral foundation that allowed them to express themselves without limiting that expression oh, right. by continued expansion of the law and i see that as what hayek with his recognition of informal capital need but was and i see that as my uh, recognition of informational capital so yes. if you look at you look at this as uh, the 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 invention of the modern uh, classical liberal order and its uh, emphasis on federations of nation states and basically it's, it's the Smithian you know the the Locke Smith Hume uh, uh, and uh, Blackstone and Founders doctrine that yeah. was a moral ambition for mankind right but um, it was a moral ambition that like all class class ambitions right depends on having the morals of the class so if you want to expand the people that participate in that thing right that method that strategy you have to increase the laws to force the people who emerge in into their new capacity of agency the financial sector who's a fucking cancer and the uh, clerical sector who's like Pancre what's the word is it pancreatic there's like there's some really bad cancers but pancreatic is up there right what's what's a worse one than pancreatic I, I I'm not gonna categorize them like that but that, that one's pretty bad <laughs> so you know you get that stuff and you realize that on top of that they're all licensing increasingly lower class behaviors yes because we're not instituting laws that maintain the behavior, maintain the behaviors that we call aristocratic, but they're actually middle class aristocratic behaviors that continue to hold people into into maintaining the informal and informational capital. Okay, right. that, that, that's that's I don't know if I've said it that well and clearly and briefly before. So that's why I call it a short curve. I thought that was well done. Can we you wrap know, it? You're you're supposed to come back at me now with some. some... No, no, it's like this. It's it's the issue. Is this is is um. Yeah, they've been active. They've been using the financial power to to pervert the intentions of the society at large at the expense of Western civilization's information and capacity to inform its members, and and it's we're living in hell because of it, and it's it's. It's good it's going to fail. It's going to fail, and it's a good thing, and then we must reorganize out of that. Mm -hmm. And it is the people who support it that are problematic, which is why I pointed at the boomers, because they've been incentivized to support it, because that's what they're depending upon in order to live their good lifestyle in their retirements. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the problem is, if you sell a people a boat, boat, boat it's like you shall make no, it's not a crime if there's no law, right? It's just uh, lawlessness. Right. Well, the problem is that if you tell people, you make a promise to people and they're fucking stupid, 
right? All right, this is the problem of false promises, right? Then all of a sudden, what happens? It's like I did the right goddamn thing. Yes. You told me, and so yes. now the boomers are screwed because they did what they were told and they thought they were doing the right thing and they worked really hard and all and they saved their money and all this other crap. But what happened? What happened is that they, in doing so, they took care of the property part of the pyramid, which is the bottom, which is what the, which is what libertarians want. They didn't take care of the, uh, the informal capital, which is behavioral, and they didn't take care of the, the informational capital, which is the operating system by which people make infer, d decisions. Now, it's important to understand that the conservatives tried to do that, and they failed every time. They tried to suppress it. They've always failed. Why? Because democracy doesn't pursue excellence. It produces a race to the bottom. Why? Because when you have democracy, which is a basically majoritarian democracy, which is sort of what we've fallen into, then what occurs is that there's just always more people that, uh, especially if things go downhill, there's always more people with parasitic incentives or irresponsible incentives than right. there are people with responsible and productive incentives. <clears throat> That's a grab. That's a grab? All right. That's a wrap. That's a wrap? Okay. Wait. So this is, uh, I want to say this is uh, Kurt Dulu and Brad Wuerl for the Natural Law Institute. This is a, a a short, I don't know how long it's been. I don't, it doesn't have a 34 time. minutes. All right. So this is a 34 minute uh, chat and we've covered two topics, which was, no, we covered one topic, which was the boomers and uh, the, the cause, the cause and consequence of the manipulation of the boomer generation. Oh. Um, and it, or, and uh, and so Brad's going to do his thing now, which is encourage you. Wait, but first I'm going to title this. I'm going to call this a tragic story. It's a tragic story. Now you can hit like and then subscribe. And don't forget the notification bell because Kurt wants to, you to be notified. And then you can tell him why it was important to be notified. All right. All right. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks, guys. I gotta. Find, I always have trouble finding the stop video button. You could do it. I,